What's going on guys? This is Gene Jensen and this is going to be a real quick video, but it's very, very important. It's about hooking up your trailer to your vehicle and doing it the right way. All right, so there is, by experience, there is nothing worse than having a trailer come off the hitch or the hit or the, the tongue breaking or anything while you're running down the interstate at about 70 miles an hour. I've had that happen. It's not fun. But luckily, I had my safety chains on. I had everything set up the correct way. I was able to slow down and get to the curb and get it right. But it was scary. So this is how I hook up my trailer to save me when crap like that happens. All right, so first of all, let's drop, let's drop down here. I'll show you guys a few things. The biggest thing, or one of the big things, is to make sure that the ball is the right size for the receiver. And so if you look on the top of this receiver right here, it has written the size ball. It's a two inch ball, SEA class two. And I have to have a, so a, a class two hitch and um, a two inch ball. And I've got this nifty little, uh, little hitch right here that has three different size balls. I use the two most of the time, but when I'm towing uh, my, my brother-in-law's bigger trailer, the, the two, and a, two and a quarter inch ball is the one I use. But anyway, so you check and you make sure you have the right size ball. If you have too small a one, this thing's gonna pop off, it's gonna go down the road. Um, if you have too big one, bigger one, it's not gonna go on right, you may not catch it, and same thing, your trailer falls off. So make sure you match the ball. We're out, while we're on the subject of uh, trailer balls, one of the things that I have not done in the past, and I always wondered what the squeak was. Now you roll down your window and you're towing your trailer and you listen, and there's always a squeak when it bumps or whatever, and I thought it was the trailer itself. Come to find out it was the ball. And I, and I started to grease the, the trailer ball. And I started out using axle grease, and that's all I had available. And I figured it would be just fine. Well, that axle grease was nasty. It caked up, it, you bumped into it, it messed up your pants forever. You might as well throw your britches out. But, uh, and you guys know how much it hurts when you bump into one of these things. But anyway, so um, I just recently found this one product. And it's a three-in-one product. And it's called Trailer Hitch Lube. Okay, or, or gel is what it is and it's really really cool you just take it and you spray it on the ball and it, you don't have to do a heavy coat just like that you do it once every couple two or three months and you're set it stays on there it uh, it relieves it relieves the squeak but most importantly it prevents the rust what will happen is if you don't do that your ball and your hit and your receiver will become rusty and eventually wear out over time. Those old, old trailers you see, if you look up inside there, there's always a, a ton of rust and it just weakens your stuff. So make sure you grease it up. It makes for a better tow, it makes for a quieter tow. But I love that stuff. It's a lot better than axle grease. All right, so when you back up your, back up your vehicle to the trailer, I want you to come down here and look real quick, real quick. So my trailer, if I was to line that ball directly up underneath this hitch right here, when I lower it down, the locking mechanism down here will, will pop up and will get snagged and it won't work. It literally will not uh, hook up to the ball. So I have to, what I call nose in, I have to put the ball down right at the nose, lower the trailer onto it, and then rock the trailer to it. And that's because I have this thing, this thing so snug and I like it that way because I know it's not gonna come off. But I'm gonna go ahead and lower it down and show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so uh, a few things, and I, I've learned a lot of these from my own mistakes. Make sure that you lock this thing down. I was I had left the the, uh, the dealership or my or Bucks Island Marine one day with my boat. Got uh, about a mile down the road and thought to myself, did I drop the lock? And I didn't, or I didn't drop the latch. And I, I uh, quickly pulled into a a, a, a a parking lot and I was able to drop it and lock it. But I got, it got into a conversation and I just totally forgot to do it. Luckily the boat didn't fall off the trailer, or the, didn't, the trailer didn't fall off the truck. But anyway, so you latch this down, and then a lock. You can buy a specific coupler lock. I just use a little cheap master lock, same thing. Lock it down. Goes right through here and latch it. That way this, there's no way this is gonna pop up. It's not gonna fall out and it's not gonna do anything during bumpy roads and stuff like that. Now your safety chains. This is critical. Now, 
on this boat they they hook the chains on both sides of the tongue and so you can cross them up so make sure that you cross them just like this and then hook them up now some people will hook them one backwards and one forward i don't see the point i hook both of mine straight just like that make sure there's about two inches or inch and a half to two inches clearance on the ground so these things don't drag mm -hmm. so much and then your lights you just hook up your lights make sure they're hooked up really good and you're ready to go now if your trailer ever does come off the ball of your hitch okay what's going to happen is you're going to get some huge fish tails from your trailer okay the you you've got your chains crossed underneath it so if that ever happens that cross cradles your tongue and catches your tongue and keeps your tongue from digging into the concrete so much and it'll allow you to be able to gain control of your trailer as you slow down because your tongue's going to go up underneath your, your vehicle. Gain control over it and work your way to the side of the road. It ain't the best scenario, but it is the best way to do it when it happens. It's Luckily, when I did it, there was no cars around and it was a small trailer, but it is really, really scary. But, uh, but be sure you hook everything up right. Be safe on the road. Um, but... Uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you. I'd like to thank 3in1 for sponsoring this video. You can find all the information in the link down in the description. Appreciate it.